My name is Molly Seidel. I am a professional marathoner for Puma. Yeah. I am the third American woman ever to medal in the marathon at the Olympics. Woo! Did you always see yourself as wanting to be an Olympian, and how did you stumble up upon that? Yeah, it was. Um, I, I come from a family of non-runners, uh, and so it was uh, an interesting transition for my family to see me really get interested in this sport that they had no point of reference to. But I came from a really interdisciplinary background. I did a ton of different sports as a kid, and, but I always knew that running was it for me. I, something about just the motion of running, the act of getting to go out and do something where you cover so much space and get to really redefine how you interact with your, I don't know, just the way that you experience the world. I love that aspect of it. And so, I also watched Dina Castor when I was like 10 years old winning a bronze medal in the Olympics, and I was like, damn, I really want to do that too. Like, I think it's something, it's a combination of loving it, and then also just loving what the overall sport is. I've been through a lot of phases of my career, and before, Olympics before made it big in the marathon, what got me back in was the Boston running community. I was leaving a training group here and in the intervening months, I didn't, I had lost a lot of the love for the sport and just showing up to group runs in Boston, I was going to the Tracksmith runs, I was going to Heartbreak, I was meeting people through the sport, I was doing the New England Grand Prix and seeing, just like getting to hang out with, sorry I'm going to call you guys nerds, but other running nerds, just <laughs> love getting out and doing this stuff, like that's where I find the joy in the sport. Whether you're a professional athlete or not, like when do you know when to push and when to kind of take a step back? I mean, it's a really hard thing to learn. Like I feel like I'm still learning it. This current injury cycle that I'm in has been honestly a really powerful learning experience for me because I have been, I've been running at a high level for a long time and I've gotten a lot of success by burning it down. Like. My typical pattern is just go all out. If I am not at my absolute limit, it wasn't a good training session. Like I push myself really hard, and it leads to really high highs but really low lows. And I'm approaching my 30th birthday this summer, and I want to, I want to be in this sport for the long term. I see other women running really well into their late 30s, early 40s, and I'm like, I want to be, keep doing this for another decade. But I need to find that sustainability. So it's been. It takes, honestly, I think, falling down a few times and hitting your head and finally learning the lesson, and I hope that this will be a, a good learning lesson for me. <laughs> but no, if you're asking, it, it is very tough for me to take off days because it is that feeling of, like, I need to be pushing, I need to be pushing and getting it and realizing, like, you're allowed to respect your body, mm -hmm. to give yourself the time, because it's like you have to respect your body as the tool. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's all that, but... Even the top runners really need to learn that lesson. Yeah. No, it's funny, like, even just calling that an ultra, after you ran 230 miles, no. yeah, I'm doing a 50K. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's part of this overall goal of more sustainability and just keeping things, taking a bit more creative approach to how I do major marathons. It hasn't really been done in our sport of the back and forth between trail and roads, but um, over the last two summers, dealing with different injury cycles, I raced trails during the summer and came off of it and was able to have a really strong fall. Last year, my 223 in Chicago came off a summer of trail racing and doing Speed Goat, and, uh, which is a race up in Utah. Um, and so, in this goal of trying to think, how do I keep myself as strong as possible for the next decade of my career, the idea is let's take a slightly different approach. Let's try some of these trail races. Let's try mixing it up, get that strength back, and then we take it back to the streets, hopefully a New York or a Chicago or something like that, and we see what we can do. But also, it's just fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's fun getting to do new things. It's fun getting to challenge myself. And probably get my ass kicked by some really good trail runners. So I'm excited for it. I'm actually really, really passionate about music. Um, and what if I was like, I'm dropping my demo today. <laughs> um, no, I, like, for me, like, music has been a really big part of my upbringing. I play about five different instruments, and wow. so when uh, I'm not running, I'm generally playing music, like, in my house. So this, 
like it's been nice the last like few months now. Like I physically couldn't move when I broke my knee, and so I was just playing bass like all day long. Mm -hmm. And it like it's nice. It's just totally different from like running. It's hard in a different way. I need to be really creative and change my brain up with it, but it's relaxing. What are the instruments that you play? Um, um, drop that casually. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I do um, piano, ukulele, accordion. Banjo and bass. Wow. 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 Yeah, I like it. I know. <laughs> to be honest, I would say like just encouraging activity in any way, not pushing a certain activity on a person. Like the thing that I really appreciated the most about my parents is they never said you need to be a runner. It was that I expressed the interest. I said, this is something that fills me up. And they were like, what can we do to support this in the way that you need? Mm -hmm. And I I really needed that. And I think ultimately that's what led me to be able to bring my own excitement about the sport and grow in it in a very organic way, rather than it being like, my parents are making me go to a track meet. They want this for me. I didn't feel like I had to prove anything to them or, or even make them proud. It was just like, Knowing that whatever I did, they were behind me 100, like 150%. That was a really cool feeling.